Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our Total War Rome 2 Roman Empire campaign, where we continue our campaign into Hispania, having a bit of difficulty at the moment. Um, we are just fighting on too many different fronts. We do not have enough legions in order to um, control everything that we need to control. So we're finding ourselves stretched awfully thin here. Now we've managed to hold on to everything uh, between turns, I have gone ahead and advanced, and I also went through and I spent a lot of our uh, treasury on various upgrades. Um, I think a lot of them were, well, some of them there, a lot of them here. So we have a little bit left uh, just as like discretionary funds to see, you know, if we need to secure some loyalty or buy a couple troops here or there. But for the most part, I'm upgrading the buildings in. Um, Hispania so that we can hopefully keep our legions moving and not get bogged down um, having to garrison everything all the time. So, um, down here, the end of last episode we left off having sort of pitted our navy against their navy. Um, so what happened was they decided to sail back into their friendly territory there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to corner them in that spot so let's bring our navy up we'll do it slowly just so that i can see what's happening i'm assuming that they've gone into port but i don't know that um i don't think that's them i'm pretty sure they had a proper navy somewhere but i do not know where it went so what i was hoping to do was put my transport ships and my fleet in such a way that they couldn't sail past it because every army has this red area of control that the enemy can't move through without directly attacking us. Obviously that's kind of difficult with such open waters but if the enemy was in a port it would have been easy to block them or at least set it up so that they would have had to sail back and around and not directly here because their goal is to basically just keep hitting me here so that I can't abandon it. But, um, it doesn't look like their navy is there. I honestly do not know where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double time it. And we're going to push out to about as far as we can. I'm going to say there. And then my fleet here is going to push a little bit closer. Uh, maybe closer than that. I want to make sure that we're getting the reinforcement there. And that gives us a pretty wide area that the enemy now has to sail around. But I think that their fleet is somewhere over here. Because it was a proper fleet. It wasn't just an army. So we could see them sail right past us and hit this. But I don't think that they'll be able to get that far. And still attack in the same turn. I guess we'll see about that. Um, is this going to resolve itself? It looks like it will. So unless something happens in this province... In the next couple of turns, that provincial instability will tick down enough where this public order will um, right itself without me intervening. Over here, I could have this army contribute to that sort of blockade as well. But I'm wary about leaving this place abandoned because the enemy here from the Averni could attack us uh, via the land. I'm pretty sure they can make that. I'm pretty sure we can attack them. Yeah, so they can attack us. Well, I assume, but our general does have a couple of buffs that might make him move a little bit farther. Anyways, even if we don't um, get attacked by them, there's still the chance or there's still the issue of the public order here. Because the military presence is currently offering a plus 13. We leave... This goes from minus 5 to minus 18. And that means a couple of turns and we have a rebellion on our hands. So don't really want that. Um, what we're going to have to do is keep building public order. And so to that end, I've obviously built um, Consecrated Ground, Public Forum, and an Aqueduct. All of which will give us public order. And as we upgrade those, it'll give us more and more. So hopefully we can eventually set that up so that it takes care of itself. And then in... This area, I'm a little bit concerned because public order is a real issue right now. And I don't have an army there doing anything. Uh, I do have this one lone general. 
uh, who I, <clears throat> excuse me, recruited at the end of last turn just to make sure that this ship couldn't take the settlement from us, and sure enough, he besieged it anyways. So, I, I wonder if we can win this. Let's see. Um, it's saying no. I find that a bit interesting because we outnumber them almost four to one. This is a proper naval vessel though, so maybe it's factoring in like them ramming us or something and sinking us. So we obviously don't want that attack, but it could be possible for me to say recruit a couple of ships. Or just troops in general. Um, if I put you here, what do we have? Oh, I can't recruit because we're besieged, right? Well, at least I can't, um, I can't recruit or hire naval ships. So it's going to have to be land-based mercenaries. Um, it looks like the Iberian slingers are less expensive. And so what I would be doing is probably just offering up... <clears throat> One of these units as a sacrifice, and then making sure we pin the enemy vessel long enough to basically just throw a bunch of units on top of it. So to that end, maybe it would be better to take the swordsman and I could take two of them. And we'll make sure that we fire them before the end of this turn, but I'm hoping that that would be enough. And it looks like he did retreat, so he's basically saying that yes, that is enough. The issue now is, can we get far enough out there to attack him? No. That's a bit unfortunate. Um. Well, I'm going to disband one of you. Because I don't want to pay you guys. But I'll keep the other one around, just in case. Ebora has a plus two public order, but 20 of that is military presence. So, we can't leave for a little while, which is unfortunate, because I need that legion um, over here, really. <laughs> and then that one could swap, but still, this whole situation here is not great. Um, we have that. Let's see. Uh, of course, we have <clears throat> this front that we're fighting on over here. I believe we are in the clear to move this legion into um, a position to counterattack. It looks like they can actually get all the way to Massalia in one turn. So the enemy has 14 troops plus zero in the garrison. So I think that's a pretty winnable fight. We have numbers on our side and in general uh, troop quality. However, I think it might make more sense to basically move them how far can we get and still set up a fort um, i'm thinking like right there we'll get them in position to attack and then actually you know what there's really no point if we can attack from here so never mind about that we'll just let them rest for another turn and then in the spring, we'll go ahead and attack. But for now, let's let them replenish a bit. Just because there are a couple units that are um, under strength here. You guys should be able to... Or you know what? I talked last time about moving this army across the border so that we could recruit. So let's do that. You are going to take their place in Genoa. And that will give us um, the same recruitment bonus or replenishment bonus we would have gotten Medlon. Or Milan. Though it looks like we were getting the same regardless. So I don't know that it matters. But let's get you in Velothri. And we wanted a bit more cavalry if I'm not mistaken. I think I was going to take Mercenary Italian Cav. Um, what was I going to take? The Auxiliary Cavalry we'll take later. I think we'll do the... Shock Cav here. Let's see. Melee attack. Um, I also... If I remember right... These guys were superior. Oh, these are mercenaries. Yeah, so that's... That's another thing we'll fix. Let's disband those. We'll take the... Um, Socii Equites. Who are going to be just better in general. Yeah, it looks like the only thing they have less of is melee defense, but otherwise they are superior in every way. So I'll take two of those. 
And then I think... Uh, I can't afford two of them, so I'll give that a turn. Do I need to spend any money on securing loyalty? Because I should probably find out before I go ahead and spend all of my money. Looks like I can't afford it. Um, but it doesn't look like I really need to. We're in pretty good shape without it. Next turn, th there's a good chance we will. But for now, that's fine. This is fine. Um, that might be it for us. Public order is still hanging in there, and it should grow after this gets built. Um, the food situation will also be resolved by that building. Yeah, I think we're in uh, pretty solid condition here. Not great, especially not down here. But um, this is definitely workable. We can make this happen the way we want. Um, this whole territory is fine, though I am very, very concerned about leaving this without any legions whatsoever. By the way, it's worth mentioning, uh, these two factions are now at war. And um, they were at war, but I think there was a peace treaty last episode, so we should see fighting here. I hope they don't fall, because the last thing I want is for more powerful factions to be growing in this area. Uh, I'd prefer to be able to conquer this through a divide-and-conquer approach, but if they're all more or less unified under one or two factions, that's going to be difficult. Uh, so with that, I think we are... You know what? Let's go through diplomacy. We haven't looked at diplomacy in a while. Look at Athens go. Wow, okay. Um... I didn't realize I was at war with the Cantabri. Ah, they have an alliance with the Averni. Okay. Hmm. I'm guessing they're not willing to trade with me, but I Lords suppose it doesn't outlaw. hurt to try. Nope. And then we have trade agreements there. Well, Wouldn't mind a trade friend. agreement here, even if it doesn't last. I'm not going to pay them for it, the though. Offer. Um. No, I'm not going to trade with you. I would well, trade with you guys. Friend. Sit. Or another arranged marriage. Probably not a great idea. That doesn't seem to end well for the um, person involved very often. You are welcome. Nobody seems to be interested in trading with me, which is a bit disappointing because we have a lot of stuff that they might benefit from. Oh well. Nothing to be done about it right now, I suppose. Let's go ahead and advance. Apparently we're holding another triumph. I don't know why. Uh, I've also been sabotaged. Research complete. We'll have to look into that. Um, but at least we've got a plus four public order per turn. Oh, only to his local province, though. Right. So we don't have nearly as much money this time around. So we're going to have to be a little bit more choosy with our upgrades. Um, I am not really running too many mercenaries. So that's not going to be super helpful. Um... That might be nice. Less attrition is pretty much always a good thing. Especially during sieges, because sieges make up so much of this game. That could be pretty helpful. The plus two public order would certainly not go amiss. Um, and then the minus five corruption and the plus three percent tax rate, while not a huge bonus, um, could add up. If we look at our overall treasury... Um, let's see. Taxes are equal to, well, let's just look at total income. So we'll just call this 20,000. If we're talking, where was that? Here? 3% of 20,000 is, uh, you know, no small number. So that could be worth doing. And what was our corruption? Do we know based on this? Or do I have to go, probably have to go province to province to see what it is. It'd be nice if it told me how much overall we were losing to corruption, but if we wanted to find out, we'd have to do this. Normally, I don't bother to look too much into these things. Um, so if we go here, we can see that corruption is at 21.2%, so that would drop us down to 20... Not 20, uh, like 16.2? And that is based on it's not going to give me the raw number but it would effectively give us five more percent of this income so i suppose that could be worth it and then we've already finished pretty much everything we're going to want to touch over there 
So I think it comes down to sieges or income in public order. Let's go income in public order right now. What's going on over here? Uh, so we have a patrician who's being squared up on by this warlord. What can we do to him? We can subvert him. Um, recruit agent. It's only a 7% chance of critical success, but a 58% chance of success, and only a 3% chance of being wounded in a failed attempt. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. I shouldn't be wasting money, but we need to do something. We can't just, like, sit there. Um, he was hindered. So we were unable to persuade him to join, but he still can't do stuff, and that did level up the character, so I suppose it wasn't a total waste. Of course, he's not earning us money right now, which is probably a better use of his time. Um, let's see. I forget which one we were trying on the other... character. I think it was this? I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so he's trying to earn us some more money. Um, let's pan back this way. You guys are in a little bit better shape. They apparently have abandoned the city, so we can basically walk right in. Uh, they will get a chance to reinforce, but if we attack, they're going to have to basically land their ships in order to fight. And so that gives us a massive advantage. Surprised that they would do that. Maybe they're trying to come attack us here, or are they at war with uh, these guys by chance? Let's find out. No. Not as far as... Oh wait, that's the wrong one. It's these guys. Still no. They're not at war. So maybe they're trying to move on... Alalia. That would be concerning. But... Now that I have this legion, I could cut them off... If I needed to. Let's go ahead and hire these two while I have the funds. And that's going to put them at 20, so this is now a full legion as well. Um, after they're done recruiting, we might need to send them here. I guess let's, let's go ahead and do this. We'll find out if there's any stuff over here, but I'm pretty sure there isn't because we didn't see anything. And we immediately start with ladders. I don't know if I want to necessarily fight this rather than just auto-resolve it because they're not going to be defending the actual town. Again, they're just going to be landing in their ships on the coastline and then running around trying to form up. And frankly, that's going to be a, a really, really quick route. There is very little, if any, chance that we lose that battle. So I think I will go for the auto-resolve in that case, but we'll just let them encircle it for now. Uh, let's see. Over here... That's a full legion. That's only 12. What is the garrison here? 7. So in total, 19. Um, I do not know where their navy went, if it went somewhere. That's them, so I don't need to worry about that. Oh, our friend's back over here. Uh, if we were to attack, what is it going to say? Oh, he's just going to run. Okay. So I guess we'll just have to keep doing that to chase him off. Um, yeah, he's going to be out of range... It's kind of annoying. Um, I might try to recruit a ship or something here at some point to deal with it, but right now it's not a great time. So I'm just going to have to let it be. But that's the only place that's really in any danger. And even now, there's a good chance I could probably just walk away and attack him with the... Um, the ship garrison that we have. I'll wait until there's an actual um, army garrison, like, you know, land garrison. So two more turns, and then this can get disbanded or moved or whatever needs to happen. I'll probably move them here because the public order there is still negative, though um, not as bad as other places. Actually, it's turning around here. And one more turn until this stuff is built. So what's the situation here then? Minus 13 from instability, cultural differences are still a problem, military presence is giving us 20.
but it is still a plus 10. So if we hang out here a little bit longer, we're going to get plus 2 from that, plus 1 from that, and plus 2 from that. So plus 5. The provincial instability will decrease by minus 1. So that will bring the change per turn up to a plus 6. The culture here is shifting. I don't know if we'll get a full point out of that, but it shouldn't be more than a couple of turns before we can pull this army out and still have uh, pub uh, positive public order there, or at least uh, neutral public order. So let's see. You guys are positive there as well. Um, suppose I can upgrade this to help you with that. You guys need to remain there. I'm thinking I want to blockade their port. And it looks like we could win that with just the navy. But we have an army here. We may as well use it. So we'll maintain the blockade. And then you guys are going to go into a regular marching stance. It doesn't look like you can quite get into the position I want you to. I was hoping they could get on the beach. And then attack. I guess let's try it. I, I want them attacking via land, not via sea. So I guess let's just see what they do. Okay, we have to wait a turn then. But we can attack that on the following turn, and that should basically remove any ports that they have. They'll still have Numantia here, but they won't obviously be able to do much, if anything, for their ships. And that should lead to some pretty nasty attrition that destroys their navy. Um, I should probably upgrade this as well. The question is to what? Hmm. I'm thinking a harbor. But I might regret that. Actually, wait a moment, because I think I need that money. Minus seven. Wow, that really jumped. Okay, we're going to have to spend it here, I think. They went from positive to negative in like a turn. And negative 11 at that. So we're going to go ahead and spend it to get them to minus one. And yeah, now I'm broke. But I think that's about it for now. Um, we can resolve this, though. No reason to continue waiting around here. Again, I'm just going to auto-resolve this. For the sake of expediency. So down they go. Um, it looked like they did commit that force. They could have denied... Um, or declined to reinforce and preserve that army, but they decided to go ahead and throw it in there, which was stupid because they had no chance of winning. So they basically just got killed. Um, I'm going to occupy this because it was mine. And it looks like they've not touched some of the buildings here, so that's great. I'm going to have to convert this back to an amphitheater. Oh, I got some more money. Um, but is that enough money? I guess I should go see. Also, I need to build an aqueduct there. Hmm. What to do, what to do? Well, I'll build the aqueduct, I think. Just so that doesn't become a slum. And whatever we were going to do with the rest of that money can wait. Let's see. Um, melee attack skill, melee defense skill. for Only for heavy infantry, though. I think the additional campaign movement range there is pretty good. It's also going to give us more morale and more charge bonus. So yeah, I'm going to take that. That could have been good too. Less upkeep and more morale is always a nice thing. But campaign movement is great, so I'm going to take that first. And then I'm broke again. You guys are recruiting. I think that's it for this turn now. Um, two more turns until we can upgrade Rome. That's under siege, and things are sort of under control here. Oh, what is this? We have a Carthaginian or Punic League general marching about. I've got to be careful because they can hire up all the local mercenaries. And that'll cause problems, but short of that, they're not going to overcome a garrison with what they've got there. I'm actually wondering if I should try to intercept it now. You can't quite get to them. 
My concern is that they're going to hire a bunch of mercenaries because the AI cheats and they just pull money out of their ass. And all of a sudden this unit, or this four unit army is going to become like a, a 14 unit army of elite mercenaries. So like for example, what could you recruit right now? Uh, you could pull out nine units and that would be a decent army. Like just those nine right there are pretty solid. So that would be an issue, but there's very little I can do about it right now. I could send this army out, but then we take a big public order hit and I can't get to them this turn anyways. So if I do that, there's a chance that they recruit all those units and then attack me out in the open. I think we'll just play it safe here. We'll play it conservatively and maybe they don't have enough money for the mercenaries. I suppose we'll find out. All right, provincial migration, what is this about? So provinces far from Rome often lack Roman citizens and culture in exchange for lower relief. The Senate will encourage Romans to migrate, especially. Uh, so what does this do? Entrepreneurs, um, plus 10 wealth from commerce in all regions and plus 5% tariff income from trade agreements. Uh, just plus five tax rate for four turns. That's probably the best one. And plus one food. No, we got enough food. Let's just do the taxes. We've been sabotaged again. Oh, wow. Twice even. We had a son. Somebody did. Um, I say son because there's three names here. Generally, the um, Roman women in this game only have two names and the men have three. So I'm assuming it's a male child, but we'll check. And oh, great. Masali is under siege. We'll look at that as well, but we did complete a mission, so that's a free 10,000 gold. Nice. We have another one to complete. So, subject, subjugate 13 different factions by making them your client state or by capturing their last settlement. Easy enough. That'll get us another 10,000. All right. Uh, so, it looks like the Carthaginians, again, I'm just going to keep calling them Carthaginians, even though they're the Punic League now. They were the main faction. Um, they're raiding. They didn't call up a bunch of mercenaries. I wonder, did that put them closer? Hmm. Let me see. Public order here is at plus 17. And 20 of that is military presence. So if this legion leaves, that puts us at minus 3. But on the following turn, it would only be minus 2. Potentially minus one if cultural differences decline as well. We can expediate that by upping some of these buildings. I think I decided that fountains were the best call here. They are by far the most expensive, but let's see. So three, minus three food, but plus five public order, plus eight growth. This has no penalty, but it's only two public order, plus 12 growth, and a bit of cultural influence. Um, that's pretty good. The issue I have is that growth is very quickly going to become irrelevant, especially in a province this small. Uh, in fact, here it would already be irrelevant because there's no building slot right there. So, at most, it looks like it wouldn't do anything because this province is fully built up. They have all four slots there, we have all five slots here, so growth won't count for anything. So, probably not worth investing in that. And then finally, we have um, let's see, minus six food, plus two public order, plus two growth, plus 20 wealth from agriculture, plus 20% wealth, plus six security from, I mean, that's not bad, but that's a big food hit for not a lot of bonuses. That would be good somewhere where we had a lot of farms, but in such a small province, food is probably going to be limited here, so I think the fountains, or at least that tree, is probably going to be our best choice. Uh, I'll go ahead and choose that, and then if we do the Shrine of Jupiter, I think. That will, in three turns, be more than enough to solidify the public order here. Um, I'm going to pull this Legion out. And you know what? Where can they go? I might pin these guys. Let's see. If you march to here, and you march to there. I don't think they really have anywhere to go. Is that all? Yeah, I think they're kind of stuck. So let's see how that plays out. 
What's the public order here? Minus 13. Yeah, we don't want to be away from this too long. I'm going to go with Neptune there, I think. We have you... Where's Numantia is in here, but three of the four settlements in this province have ports. I think there's a good chance that we will have some wealth for maritime commerce. So, Shrine of Neptune makes sense, and again, there's no real downsides to it, so I'll grab that. And then, I could take the fountains again, but we already have this upgrading. I think I'll just leave it there, and see how that shakes out. At least for public order. Um, down here, they came closer. Let's see if we can't take them out once and for all. I'm guessing they fled out of reach. Yeah. Okay, well, just go back then. You know what? What can you recruit for me? Um, I don't want to turn this into another legion. I wasn't intending for that, but it almost makes sense because... Well, you guys aren't that expensive. I was thinking mercenaries, really high upkeep, but their upkeep's not terrible, so I'll just live with it. Uh, right, this whole situation. Yes. So, I want to make sure I'm attacking the city and not the, um, not the army. Not that it matters that much, but, well, it does, because if I attack the city, I can encircle it. If I attack the army, I can't. But maybe I came around the wrong side, because that army's in the way. I don't know. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. Saying we're not likely to win that, which I find to be interesting. I feel like we could... Maybe. Do we have numbers on them? Not really. It's pretty close, actually. Hmm... I'm just going to encircle them for now and see what they decide to do. They might try to attack us straight away or they might wait. If they do wait, we can maybe use attrition to our advantage. Over here, you guys are done recruiting. Fantastic. And then Massalia came under siege. You guys are unfortunately a little bit under strength because of that last battle. And that is a giant stack of uh, tribesmen. Are you guys suffering attrition? Um, I don't think so. I'm not getting replenishment, but I don't think we're taking attrition yet. But it will probably start soon. So... Maybe I can get you over there to break the siege. This guy needs to get back to work. That reminds me, are you working? Okay, good. Uh, yeah, let's see. Force March. It's going to get us close. My only concern is if we Force March out here, they break off and attack us out there solo. Um, that's still a winnable battle. But because of the force march, our morale will be really low, and it'll be kind of tough to fight it. So, since we can't get there in a turn either way, I'm wondering if it might make more sense to go here. My only concern is if they then can't get to here on the following turn, close enough to attack them, or at least reinforce this, um, then it was all a waste. I guess let's do it. And they can't go much further than that. But I guess I should use every last bit of movement that they have. Just to be sure that we don't botch this. Okay. Um, one more turn it looks like until that can be upgraded. So I'll probably just save a lot of our money for right now. Though. Um, let's see. None of that, like really needs to get upgraded. We got plenty of food, plenty of public order, so I'm going to leave it alone. How about you guys? Plenty of food, plenty of public order. Um, I may as well use this. 
question is where. I think we'll use it on Lepsis. Yeah, go ahead and open that up and we'll build a villa and turn it into some grain pits, I think. Um, you guys, that should be a farm. We'll worry about the rest later. And then here, I think I'll build a, a harbor. Do I need to upgrade anything else? I'd say need is pretty strong. I think most of our stuff is in a decent spot. So let's see about throwing some more money at you clowns. Um, let's see. I'm going to do the minus seven first, I think. Okay, and that still leaves us with about 5,000. Which isn't too bad. We can carry that over plus the 5,700 that we'll get. So that's going to leave us with a lot of money to play with. We'll just have to see how this plays out. If they want to assault it, that's an easy win. Um, I didn't really look at us attacking them, but I don't see why I would want to. Unless I'm taking attrition and I'm fairly confident that I'm not. But I'll, I'll really regret it if I am. Either way, we've got reinforcements coming, so they can try to attack us. Or they can just sit there, I guess. And we'll want to resolve this quickly because I don't like leaving that exposed. Mostly because of these guys. I don't think Carthage can do much to us right now. But I believe that is going to be it for this turn. I don't really see much else that we can do. So that's kind of a quick one. So uh, Carthage is offering us 5,200 gold and a peace treaty. Or for a peace treaty, I guess is more accurate. I don't see a reason to accept this. Um, we've got them pretty much dead to rights, it looks like. Uh, I mean, they still have this territory here, but that's not going to be theirs for much longer. Yeah, I just I don't see any reason to let them continue existing. If I let them have this settlement. Even if I were to like subjugate them, the issue is that their culture is going to make it impossible for me to keep this place happy. So I just, I don't see a reason to do it. I'm going to say no. And we're going to try to crush them. But they very well might try to attack in response. Okay, they are attacking. Um, interestingly, it is a naval battle. Why would they go and do that? Um, I suppose we can fight this. I did get a request for more name, and I think we're running out of time more or less anyway, so this might be the last thing we do. Well, we'll let this sort of end turn round be the last thing we do, but this will be the last major thing we do. Alright, so here we go. Here's my formation. Uh, they do have reinforcements coming, so we'll probably want to try to dispatch these guys as quickly as possible. Uh, just so that we don't have to fight seven ships at a time. We can fight five instead. So my formation, um, as much as formations matter in naval battles, I guess, is effectively the levee um, ships working as a screening force with the tower hexareem in the center as sort of like a, a base of fire, if you will. Um, this is just a... Oh wait, I forgot that this is not uh, full of archers. This, I mean, it, the tower is effectively like a, an arrow tower in a siege, but I forgot that there's um, melee troops on this and not uh, archers. But anyways, um, that one's full of javelin men. We could probably beat them in a straight up fight. So I think this ship is going to go after their heavy tower ship. My levees are going to skirmish with their Libyan javelin and try to distract so that my um, Hestadi Byremes can get in there and attack stuff. And then the um, Ballista ship is going to be targeting their main ship as well. So let's see. I think we're going to just kind of send you guys straight ahead for the time being. I'll probably be playing a lot of this at half speed or pause just because there's a lot of stuff to do micro and naval battles um, I know that bothers some people but it just kind of is what it is so yeah let's get things rolling I'm just gonna let them camp back here my hope is that they will uh, reinforcements are coming from the flank oh boy uh, what flank that flank okay 
That's a little concerning. Uh, more javelin men. Are those better ships? No, same ones. Uh, that was a little bit off, unfortunately. Let's have you guys start cutting around. I'm going to slow things down now. You're probably good on that vector. Let's have you cut in. Maybe they'll be able to screen for you. You guys, meanwhile, need to just light them up. Is that going to be on target? I think it is. And let's have you try to brush by. Don't want to get them caught, but their fire pots can do a whole hell of a lot of damage. Okay, go ahead and fly in there. Looks like they're going to hit you pretty much head on. Come on, cut in, cut in. You two can hit them hard. That would be great. They're going to light you guys up pretty good, but all in all, I think that's going pretty well. I uh, forgot to tell you to move. Whoops. Looks like you're going to make it. And those fire pots are probably better used on that ship. Okay, you rammed them. Get in there. Now they're lighting you guys on fire. That's no good. It's no good. Um, how did you let them get away? Probably because I'm busy ramming, that's why. Uh, big tower ship, your job is to get over there. Wait, wrong one, again. You keep doing what you're doing. Uh, one of our ships is on fire. Oh, great. How have you not done anything to them yet? I think it's you guys. Let's have you try to go mess with them. You, meanwhile, aren't really doing much, so get moving, I guess. Okay, what's happening over here? You've caught them on fire, that's good. Um, the Histadi are sitting around a little bit too much, I would say. They're starting to break, so that's something. Come on, get in there. It doesn't look like you're going to win that, unfortunately. We're going to lose some ships here, it looks like. Let's get you moving. Do not want you fighting that. The fire pots have really not done much, if anything. Which is unfortunate. Keep hitting them, please. You guys need to stay on that one. You need to get moving because they're trying to ram you. You can ram that one, I guess. Go ahead and row hard, and let's throw some morale their way. How are you not winning that? We have Hastati against Javelin Men. That should be a pretty easy victory. And you need to continue shooting at that. Let's see if this sinks. That was a good hit. Might go down. I wonder if you can wheel around and catch that one. Alright, so they've been basically shot off the board. And you still have some ammo, so stay on them. It looks like, in terms of casualties, we haven't done that poorly. Just stay on them, I guess. And you guys need to keep moving. You are going to get hit by that, which is not ideal. Can you at least board them or something? Entire unit, what unit? Oh, the Hastati. God, the Hastati are just... I feel like they got nerfed since we started this campaign because they started out okay. And then they just got really sucky. Yeah, the fire pots aren't doing jack, though. And you're just sitting there. Why are you just sitting there? Well... They're basically stuck, so our javelins will just keep shooting the hell out of them. These guys will continue kiting. If these guys ever throw any fire pots, we might actually have a chance. Come on. Spread the fire, at least. Just keep ramming them, I guess. Looks like one of their units broke. Uh, you need to get moving over there. 
and yeah, you guys just stay on that one. That unit's almost dead. In fact, you can maybe try to... Oh, yeah, sure, ram them. That's okay. Just make sure we get rid of that unit. Uh, looks like we lost one of ours over there. Go ahead and row harder so that you can outpace them. Okay, they're starting to pull away. Go ahead and cut them off. That ship is gone. So you guys can get over here. Oh, fire pots are gone. Not that they really contributed anything to this fight. Are you guys on fire? Yeah. That's unfortunate. They're starting to waver. Ah, because we finally killed that thing. Or I guess it just gave up. Because it, there's still plenty of people on it. Come on, go, go, go. Get out there. I want everybody ramming into that thing. And I guess... Do you have any ammo? No. You can try to turn around and hit this thing. Oh, too late. They didn't even perish, they just gave up. Let's see, why don't you go after them? That's a much bigger boat, so we should win that pretty easily. And they weren't able to get out of the way, so there's our victory. Uh, we'll just end it here. Alright, so... I probably should have auto-resolved that. We would have had a much cleaner battle, but again, people were requesting some more naval battles, and this was one of the few um, ones worth fighting that we've seen in a while. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to release the captives and take that money. But yeah, we did lose a couple of ships there, and that's actually going to make this battle now a whole lot more difficult. Yeah, so they're attacking me with a fairly large force. Um, it looks like it's going to be, what, 3,500 against 2,600. Wow, I don't know if we're going to be able to win that. They don't have a whole lot of cavalry, though. It looks like, I mean, they do have elephants. So, one unit of Carthaginian cavalry, three units of Carthaginian cavalry. Uh, they might be able to outclass us with it. Most of their units are Carthaginian hoplites. Yeah, they've got a lot of them. It's going to be a tough fight, but we can't retreat, so we really have no choice. We could lose a legion here. Now, this is, uh, I think, like our son-in-law. So if he dies, it's not the end of the world. But this is still going to be one hell of a battle. We'll have to see about deployment, but our best chance might be to overwhelm the garrison army before the other army can arrive. If the reinforcement is too close or too quick, though, that plan goes out the window very fast. And we basically just have to turtle up and hope that our units can hold, which against hoplites they might be able to, but then we still have to win the cavalry battle, which is going to be difficult. Uh, one advantage that we do have is we could potentially kill their general very early by um, skirmishing with the Numidian Cav. As you guys have seen in earlier battles, the elephants do go down very quickly if you have Skirmisher Cav. So that might allow us a little bit more of a chance for victory. We don't have time to fight this today though, so I'm going to quick save once more. Hard save, if it'll let me. But that's where we'll end it, and we'll pick back up in the next episode with uh, this battle at the start. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Total War Rome 2 with you, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode.